Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Arts Council of Surrey Community Gallery here at the Newton Cultural Centre. My name is Wendy Mould. I am the producer of ACS Gallery Talks. I'm here today to tell you, to introduce you to our featured artists for the month of May, Melissa Peacock. Melissa's show will be here until May 28th and can be viewed in person Tuesdays to Sundays 10 to 3.30 each day, or you can see it online at the Arts Council of Surrey.ca. Melissa's show is called The Wild Satellite. It's about the adventures of her superhero, a cat. He travels off to mystic, magical landscapes that are saturated with watercolor. And on his way, he meets many inspirational creatures and he learns the stories and learn some truths about life. Melissa's show, uh, her art, and her storytelling make for a really inspirational show. And I'm really looking forward to chatting with her and hearing some of the stories about the pictures that, go, that are here in the show. So, let's go meet the artist. So, Melissa, I am very excited to talk to you about your show. I have seen a number of your pieces of work over the last couple of years and uh, some of your videos too. And I really enjoy what you're doing. Uh, it's totally different from what I do, but I find it very interesting. So tell us about our first picture here, the satellite. This is your, uh, your series. What's it about? Tell us. Oh uh, yeah, the Wild Satellite Show kicked off by this one painting that was actually just done for a jury competition put on by the Arts Council of Surrey, which was called Just Chairs. And oh. me wanting to be different. <laughs> um, I took inspiration from lyrics in a song that talked about a woman who built her own satellite from an old rusted chair and went off into the universe to look for a better life. And so I drew it with a astronaut cat character. And you know, I fashioned the chair out of regular junk that most people would have, and it goes out into space. And I really liked this concept, this character, a lot as just like one of those series that artists do in the background when you don't have any ideas and you just revisit it over and over again uh, for fun. And so I started taking this cat out on adventures. And I had to give him a look eventually not without his helmet and I fashioned it after my late cat Milo who had died uh, from heart failure mm -hmm. and I took a lot of comfort in sending him to new and excellent worlds um, because he always seemed too big for our household. He seemed like he was bored and wanted to get out but he, I couldn't give him that life. And so in his passing, I'm able to give him that life. Awesome. That's neat. Okay, so now we're going to go on some of these adventures that your cat went on. Okay, well, let's go see the next picture. Sure. So now, here's a couple of pictures about some of the animals in your show. And I understand now they all have their own stories. And this came out of a project that you started working on not too long ago. Something to do with the veterans? Could you tell us more about that? Um, <laughs> not veterans. Oh. Uh, veterinary hospital. Oh, yes. Um, so I was taking a lot of comfort from drawing my cat in different uh, adventures that he can go on in real life. And I wanted to spread that service to other people and, and paint their pets in different um, adventures, like on a pirate ship or in beautiful gardens. And that led me to partner up with the King George Veterinary Hospital um, in Newton. And you can go there to see art anytime you want. Um, they're really nice. And so every month I've been painting a new image that features a bit one main character animal, let's say. And so something like this, uh, where I have this star hawk. It's a made up character that I made. Um, do you want me to tell the story? Tell us briefly about the story, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, in my story that I made up when I was a child, there are these star hawks. They're just black hawks with stars on their wings. 
that they come in and circle at sunset to hang stars in the night sky, and that's how day transitioned into night. And so I thought of this sweet little baby star hawk who had been working with his peers to practice making his stars, which are gemstones in my images. Um, and he's just not feeling very brave. He doesn't want to show them to anybody. And so he sneaks off from his class and hides them in the bush so that no one will ever judge him. And so I have also in this painting where he kind of gets the courage to finally perform and hang his, it's, he's got all these like in, imperfect stars. They have cracks in them and such, but he goes and he hangs them anyway to get the experience and to build confidence and get better at his craft. And so it was just this uh, little timeline where he's scared and the timeline where he's brave and he does the thing. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, neat, oh wow. It was too bad we don't have time to hear some of the other stories of some of your <laughs> pictures, but uh, we do have time for some other things, so let's have a look at them. <laughs> wow, a handmade sketchbook. I love those kind of things. And I understand that this is your, your treasure that's really led to the whole show and putting it all together. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about this? Sure. Um, I went camping a couple years ago and I had a challenge for myself to fill a handmade sketchbook within a week while I was there. And I decided to make the astronaut cat, who doesn't really have a name, um, the theme of the book because I had been struggling to bring all the pieces together and give them some kind of meaning, some kind of story. So I felt like there was some sort of story to it. Um, I just didn't know what it was. And so I decided to spend the week kind of developing it and started um, it started being about loneliness and disconnect with the world, and he would be going on an adventure to try to find. And so he's got all these scenes where he's just kind of alone, there isn't anybody around. Um, all these scenes from camping were perfect for this. I was just doing like drawings and stuff, uh, things that I saw. And the lesson that he learns in the middle of it is that he goes and eventually he, he's brave enough to remove his helmet. He's out in the world and he takes his helmet off and he becomes more vulnerable to the environment. He's opening up to the world. He doesn't understand why he's not connecting. And so he just becomes more braver and then suddenly all of these animals come in and they are willing to talk to him and, and celebrate with him and tell their stories with him. And that's his way of finding connection, and I thought it, the sentiment of it was that you don't really find connection in the world unless you open yourself up to it and take off your outer barrier. And it was something that I was trying to teach myself. I haven't quite gotten it yet, but it, it's definitely a character that I aspire to for myself. <laughs> oh, well, well, you know, they say all of our work is, is really a self-portrait. Right. And, uh, wow, that is, that is so cool on so many levels. Uh, I love how you put together your sketchbook. I love homemade, handmade sketchbooks. I do that myself. I am amazed that you were able to fill that book in a week because that is a lot of work and a lot of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but also, too, the story it tells. And I see it, it's really, you said it was the show, and it really is. It's the inspiration, and it's the story of your show. Yes, it definitely allowed me to take the exploration paintings and combine them with these mystical creatures that he would be meeting on his journey. Yes, and of course that's something that you love to do is combine those two ideas. I see that in your art all the time. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's go and have a look at one of the other pictures. Oh, so this picture here in the jewel grass. I really like this picture. I love the way the cat's going off in the air, but I guess I am a cat person, but don't tell my dog that. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I understand this picture came out of the sketchbook, and it's certainly a good example of some of the pictures that you have here. Can you tell us more about it? Well, this is just a picture of Milo on his adventures, and this was an exercise in a field of view kind of perspective, where it sort of fades in and out of focus. Oh, yes, lots of depth. Lots yes. of depth. 
depth of focus. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, and of course it is. You really achieved quite a few layers of, uh, of depth. Yeah, yes. it's quite a challenge. And I was inspired actually of an actual um, piece of grass that I keep seeing on walks around Burnaby Lake where it looks like glass jewels are growing out of the ground. And you might notice that a lot of Milo's adventures look really earthly, mm -hmm. and that's because there's just so much interesting things in real life and art on Earth that I just kind of combine them in different ways and imagine them as different things in different places. Oh, neat, neat. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much. I really enjoyed uh, talking with you about your work and uh, learning more about it. And, and again, I've enjoyed your storytelling as well as your art. It certainly do mix together. Was there anything else you wanted to uh, mention about your, your show? Um, I think that it would be wonderful to see in person because of the way the 3D effects uh, stick out with the paper. You will not get that watching the show online. I have a project set up that people can participate in to color in birds to add to a piece to participate in the show itself, or you can trade pieces as a token of friendship as part of the theme of the show. Um, and I'm also available to do pet commissions if you want something that you can't just take a photo of to see your pets in an environment like this or anything you can imagine. Um, I'm available for that as well. Oh, well, thank you very much. That's very good. <laughs> So, uh, great. Nice to talk with you. I'm sure I'll be seeing your work in the future. Thanks for having me. <laughs> okay. Melissa's show, Wild Satellite, can be seen here at the gallery until May 28th. The gallery is open Tuesday to Sunday from 10 to 3.30. It can also be seen online at the Arts Council of Surrey.ca.